in the league. After last night's loss to the Wizards, the King was asked if he's just playing too much. LeBron? I'm resting now. I'm sitting here talking to you guys. I'm resting when I get in my car and head home. I'm resting when I get home. I'll rest tomorrow. Um, you know, I think this whole narrative of, uh, you know, LeBron needs more rest or I should take more rest or I should take time here um, has become a lot bigger than what it actually really is. I I've never talked about it. Um, I don't talk about it. I don't believe in it. Um, you know, we all need more rest. Shit. I mean, this is a, a, a fast turnaround from last season. Uh, and we all wish we can have more rest. But, you know, I'm here to work and I'm here to, to, to punch my clock in and be available to my teammates. There he is. Big Perk. Grace in your screen. How are we doing, Perk? Always good to see you. Um, I'll get to you in a minute, sir. I'm going to start with Max Kellerman. Max, what do you think? Should the Lakers be worried? Because it's pretty early for him to be playing these type of minutes. First of all, Perk, why don't you smile with your whole face? That smile looked like the hardest thing anyone had to do. Let me see a smile. That was like a scowl smile. Can't you ever come out here and be happy? Happy to see your boys. Don't play it off like you're not happy to see me. Knock it off. That's the first thing. Look at that. The second thing is this. The LeBron James... <laughs> there it is. There it is. The LeBron James situation is a, lot, is a bunch of overlapping issues. The answer is yes, they should rest him more. But let me tell you why. There are a bunch of reasons. Number one, it's his effectiveness as he plays right now. It's gone down a little bit as his minute load has increased, which is the case with a lot of players, but particularly a guy in his 18th season who no one's ever had the status of LeBron in terms of where he ranks among the elite players this many minutes and this many miles into their NBA season. Every time he takes the floor, he's setting a new record. He's breaking his own record. So we don't know how that aging process is going to go or what to expect. But we do know that if you play a dude a ton of minutes, usually it can fatigue him. And LeBron's effectiveness recently has gone down a little bit. Not a whole lot. He's still a great. Of course, he's LeBron James. But a little bit. The second thing is this. Lakers got their eyes on the prize. And boy, they better. They better hope AD comes back and healthy. And that's going to be a whole lot to get by that Nets team if that team really starts playing defense the way they've been playing. They're going to need LeBron at his very best. What he learned in Miami after Miami going to Cleveland is I can't play both ends of the floor like I did in Miami and get to the finals every year as I get older and still be just as effective. So he learned how to manage that a little bit. And then AD challenged him to be more intense on the defensive end, and he did. But again, this is all happening. The, the greater intensity on the defensive end then in Cleveland from an earlier point in the season. The more minutes and everything at an unprecedented old age in terms of the number of minutes he's played in the NBA. So there's that effectiveness now and effectiveness to win a championship, which is the point. And then thirdly, and Stephen A., we want to latch on to this. There's only one of the three reasons. Of course you're concerned about injury at his age, given the number of miles he's played, given the pounding he takes, given the physical freak that he is. Of course, the more minutes you play, the more apt you are to wind up with an injury. And hopefully not, but it's possible, catastrophic one. All three of those reasons tell me, I know AD is out, the temptation play him more minutes. I think the Lakers should pull back a little. I'll tell you something, you know, um, I've been very, very blessed uh, in my career. Obviously, you know, I've signed on and, you know, signed on with ESPN for years to come, and I'm very, very happy about that. I'm living quite well. But every time I listen to you talk, uh, particularly about an athlete um, that has been around for a while and how age and attrition and reason. for concern and their injuries. I look at ESPN and I just want to say to the bosses, I think I should get paid more just for having to listen to you in this <laughs> drivel. It makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, this is you're the guy, as I told as, at Perk, I told him at the top of the show, you know, four years ago, because he started on July 25th, 2016, and he sat up there and said that Tom Brady would be done. He's going to fall over a cliff or whatever. Tom Brady proceeds to go to four Super Bowls over the next five years and win three of them, okay? And it took about that long for Max to admit that he was wrong or right before the Super Bowl. And now here we are talking about LeBron James. LeBron James is 36 years of age. He is in his 18th season in the league, but it's Dennis Schroeder that's hurt, and it's Anthony Davis that's hurt. LeBron ain't missed a game. LeBron came into the season complaining about the short 
window that they had before restarting the next season after finishing the bubble in October and still has not missed a game, okay? I think Steph Curry has missed games. I think Russell Westbrook has missed games. I think C.J. McCollum clearly has missed games. Nurkic has missed games. Stars throughout the league have missed games, except LeBron James. LeBron James, 18 years, 36 years of age, who's known for spending more than a million dollars on his body, and we see why. I'm trying to figure out why the hell ain't nobody else duplicating what he's doing. I want to know the damn formula. I don't have that money, but damn it, I, wa I want to know what he's doing so I can at least invest something. I mean, my God, this is if there's ever a person to listen to when it comes to their body, what level of fatigue might be, you know, might, might be injected into the equation or lack thereof, it would be him. Now, if you want to point to something, Point to the 63% shooting for the free throw line. Point to the 16% over the last six games. Point to the 16% shooting from three-point range over the last six games. Point to that, I'm with you. But I'm not concerned about LeBron's fatigue. I'm not concerned about him getting tired or anything like that. You know why I'm not concerned? Because LeBron James told me don't worry about it. That's why. And he has a resume that says let him worry about it because he knows his body better than most, and he takes care of his body practically better than anybody. I think he deserves that respect, and he deserves all of us standing the hell down and saying, defer to him. If he needs rest, he'll let us know. He did it with the pair after he took the paleo diet years ago, and he needed a couple of years to leave and, and, and depart for South Beach or wherever the hell he went for a couple of weeks, weeks yeah. because that diet had messed with him. See, he took that time off because he recognized, yo, I'm not feeling right. It's the only time he had ever done that in his career, okay? So let's listen to him and defer to him. He would know, and he has the credentials that proves he can be trusted to do just that. And, and look, Stephen A., you're absolutely right. But he, here's the problem that I have, right? Max, we come on here and you come on here and you talk about, oh, yeah, LeBron James, he should take time off. But excuse me, last time I checked, didn't LeBron James just commit to the Lakers and sign a two-year $80 million extension, $40 million a year? So that goes to show me that he's saying, you know what, y'all paid me this money that I deserve, but I'm going to hold my end of the bargain up and I'm going to go out there and perform at a high level every single game and do my job and punch in the clock. Let's give him credit for that because he's not hurt. So why sit out if you're not hurt just to say you have rest? We, I, I'm, I'm not saying so sit many. out, Perk. What are you saying? You I'm saying, not saying low sit out. I'm saying pull back the minutes a little bit. No, no, no. I'm not saying load management. I'm saying he was, according to McMenamin's article on ESPN.com, 43rd in minutes played throughout the season until this month. And now I think overall he's like third in the league and he's led the no league way. in minutes played this month. I'm not talking about sitting out. I'm talking about pulling back the minutes a little bit. Listen, listen. Frank Vogel can't afford to pull back the minutes right now, especially with Anthony Davis and Dennis Schroeder being out. If he pull out the minutes right now, Guess what? The Lakers will really be getting smacked by 50. They cannot afford to have LeBron James off the court for an extended period of time. They have no one else that's at the guard and wing position that can create for themselves and can create for others. He has to do everything. He's 80% of their offense. So, no, I don't agree with you on that. Now, what I will say, can he play better? Yes, but you have to get the right pieces around him. And I think the Lakers dropped the ball this offseason. Although I did praise them for picking up Montrez Harrell. But I think that they truly miss JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard right now. No knock on Marcus Gasol. I think he had a, a, a wonderful career defensive player of the year in Memphis. But he just not it no more. Defensively, he can't guard the pick and roll. He can't anchor a defense no more. He's not a real protector. When you look at LeBron James and you look at why his numbers are dropping, it's because of the simple fact that he used, he is used to running a high pick and roll with a, with a dynamic roller, an athletic big that is a live threat at the basket so that you have to pick and choose your poison. Now he's having to go a lot more isolation where teams are able to load up on him and take away driving gaps.
and things to that nature. He's having to do more without Anthony Davis. But should the Lakers cut back on his minutes? Hell no. They need to be cutting up and increasing his minutes because they need to get a win. Well, I, you know what, uh, I, the, the last part, because he did play 43 minutes last night, I, I, I think that's a little bit too much. But then again, I don't care because it's LeBron James and whatever it takes to win, he'll do. I will tell you this, though, your, your, your point is incredibly valid about JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard because when, the, when LeBron attacked the rim, you had to worry about him lobbing passes to those brothers, okay? Because the one thing that they could do was finish at the basket with an alley-oop. You don't really have to worry about that right now. So because of that, you have interior defense. Defenders yeah. able to key on him and force him to do more than he's accustomed to, than he really, really should have to do, or that he's accustomed to doing at least over the last year. Or so, because the Lakers had the personnel where they just lob it up and catch would finish at the basket. Not only that, they limited you to one shot because they crashed the boards and they rebounded. That's not the case this year with the Lakers as well. Yeah. And so it's problematic because other people are getting additional bites at the apple because they're not grabbing boards the way that they did last season. Obviously due to health reasons yeah, I, I, and the absence no, of, of McGee and Dwight Howard. There's no debate there. I mean, Gasol looks a little cooked, as Perk, as you point out. And Dwight Howard was just an active defender. He was much more active. And I agree that they missed that. But I want to get back to LeBron James and, and, and why you peel back the minutes. You pull back the minutes a little bit. Stephen A., you acknowledge 43 probably a little too much. Number one, I think he becomes less effective as any player does past a certain number of minutes, particularly at his age. And you bring up the fact that you trust LeBron Stephen A., and for good reason. Some dudes are different. Not only genetically different, but they take care of themselves differently. I think of, like, Cal Ripken Jr. In baseball, had the consecutive games played streak. At shortstop, no less, right? Like, he's just different. LeBron is like that. I get it. But that doesn't mean because your track record is one thing that you can't, that, that you, like, just ignore the kind of uh, uh, attrition that takes place on the other side.